Teresus! Welcome back. Back again. Vox is back. Tell your friends. Epo's back. Epo's back. Epo's back. Thank you for the new follows today. All right. We got to get down to business to defeat the Hun or something. Uh, I was digging through some of Meta's tweets and, uh, yeah, I... I feel like I say this about every company, but I feel like every company that's just a bunch of bros broing it out over something is always going to have something problematic when you dig deep enough. What's up, sinful kin? I'm honestly not too worried about the drama. Like, I appreciate seeing a creator, especially a female creator in the space, who typically gets a lot of crap, kind of get a win, get a W. That's pretty cool. But I feel like the entire scene just like exploded over this within like 12 hours in a way that I personally feel was kind of disproportionate. I think they were complete assholes and if they're literally evading taxes and breaking other laws then whatever like that. I guess it's cool that this is what brought that on. Uh, so whatever like they should be investigated if they're doing bad stuff and like it was crappy. And they deserve the, like, as the company, they deserve the response that they got because they were crappy, especially being straight from the CEO. However, realistically, like, affiliate agreement companies being crappy or exclusionary or dicks to their streamers, either to their face or otherwise, or in public, isn't entirely anything new. And I feel like everyone was just kind of looking for something to latch onto, and that was the thing of the day. Like I said, they deserved everything they got. It was just weirdly, it felt, it just felt weirdly disproportionate how much everyone wanted to jump in. I guess to make a video on it. I don't, I don't know. It, it gets really kind of hypocritical to call out what other people make videos on and I, I don't intend to. But it felt like people were just kind of happy to jump on it to jump on it, which is weird. It's one of those things where like literally every person in the world who sees that on Twitter can be like, hey, that's shitty, not gonna like them anymore. And a couple of the creators, like, I'll shout out Veritas. He just quietly was like, hey, yeah, as soon as I saw that, I broke off my agreement. I'm not gonna make a big deal about it what, beyond that, but hey, it's over. Like, that's the way to go. Like, obviously, there needed to be some degree of backlash in order to get them to respond and have any sort of negative impact. But it's one of those things where, like, do you need to make a video on that? Does this need to be a whole big discussion? Can we just, like, I don't know. Obviously, I'm kind of biased because I'm tired of drama after a month of drama that I didn't really want in the first place. And people deciding, you know, it needs to be talked about on stream. <laughs> I never understand why people, parentheses, especially small streamers, are down for the whole use my code sponsorship. So it's super, it's a toxic relationship. I, 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 used, I used to meme on it all the time because G Fuel was the common one. But when you are new and you are green and you're, for lack of a better word, and I mean this as uninsultingly as possible because literally every single one of us has been there. But when you're desperate for like to get your first experience working with brands and companies or whatever, you kind of jump at whatever. I did it too. Again, coming straight from the horse's mouth or whatever the f appropriate phrase for this situation is. I've also done it. But when you're in that position... You, you, you get so excited to jump on whatever company that will accept you that it feels like validation or legitimacy or whatever when realistically the company is just taking free advertising on a, you know, on a add up but small scale scaled up on top of each other in exchange for absolutely nothing. Like the cents on the dollar that they pay you isn't a problem to them, assuming you even make any sales. And realistically what happens a lot of the time is that you don't make the sales on your code and instead you just spread word of mouth and the word of mouth does good for the company without them directly paying you in the first place and then maybe they'll go see it again and use a big creator's code or something which is usually uh, unfortunate but they usually like especially for the smaller channels and for the people who are just starting out in their affiliate program they don't even get free product of a like cheap ass energy drink that doesn't cost anything to make they don't even get free product for it and then they plaster their stream in the banners and stuff so they can, like, feel legit having sponsors and it just muddies the waters. Like, that doesn't improve your legitimacy to the eyes of viewers, just to the hashtag small streamer circle, which 
has its own slew of issues. But, you know, if, it, if someone finds a program like that and it actually makes them money and, like, they want to rock with whatever actually profits them and, you know, they're making the bag, go for it. Cool. Awesome. But the people who jump on it that, like, aren't getting anything out of it and are just working for free spreading advertising, you are being taken advantage of. Like, there's no, it doesn't help you. Run without sponsors as long as you can, and it will only benefit you. Obviously, as long as you can, meaning within your means, don't, like, don't try to go without sponsors when you need the money and you have reason to believe you could make the money. But while speaking from a place of privilege because I've worked to the point of this becoming my full-time income and whatever, I recognize that. But even having been a fledgling creator, making basically nothing for years on end, making an extra $5 while selling your soul to some caffeinated energy drink company targeting children and plastering your stream and banner ads instead of just making the best content you can, that extra $5 might be cool to go spend on a USB cable or something. But realistically, in most scenarios, even in, you know, not super high income scenarios, it doesn't really benefit you. It's called, it's called like missing, I forgot the exact phrasing, but it's basically like worrying about cents instead of dollars. And realistically, it doesn't actually serve a benefit in terms of like proving you can work with brands. It only reveals a lack of experience if you're like hoping that it'll impress brand managers. Now, there are some small streamers, I will say, and small streamers means nothing. Like, there are some other creators that aren't super big that go all in on both their like goofy little affiliate link ads and even their ads for like their Discord server and stuff. And they'll do skits and they'll film it ahead of time and make something awesome. That's how you impress a sponsor or a potential client or whoever you want to work with. Awesome. Not everyone wants to do that. Not everyone does that. And if you're just like every five minutes, remember guys, my G Fuel cool code is blah, blah, blah to get 10% off and I get five cents every time you purchase it. It just makes you look bad. I don't know. That's probably all I should say on the subject. People want to take everything I say out of context these days, but whoo. Or maybe they don't. Maybe if I say it with my words instead of a twi Twitter thread, it can't be t like... They can understand it and they won't take it out of context. It only seems to be if there's more than two tweets back to back, everyone loses their mind. <laughs> the amount of people with pyramids of G fuel behind them. Yeah. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Like I, I can only say so much because while I don't directly advertise it, you know, anytime I do, it's a joke. Like I drink caffeinated soda. It, it was my self medication for my ADHD for the longest time until I got on medication. I don't think it's the worst thing in the world for you in moderation. What's being promoted is not in moderation, and the core concept of energy drinks is very toxic, and the fact that it's mostly being peddled onto younger audiences through streaming is awful. I, I just... I have a hard time both from, like, a business perspective, especially given the people they fund, like Keemstar, from a business perspective and from a, like, ethical perspective. It's... I just consider it terrible. Now, there are some people who, like, whose dreams have been made by their deeply integrated G Fuel sponsorships and stuff. Those people do not self-identify as small streamers. Those people were already huge before they started working with G Fuel. I would happily take a Pepsi sponsorship. Dude, I would rock a Sunkiss sponsorship. Some of my earliest videos over a decade ago had the Sunkiss logo in the intro because I thought it was goofy and I was known at the time because that was all I drink. These days, thankfully... I drink more water than Sunkiss most of the time. That's only a health thing, not because something's wrong with the soda. But like, 100%, I'd be down for that. Because I have, I literally, I was like a walking advertisement for it in my high school. But I also, like, there's a different context for that. There's soda of, everyone knows what soda is. Everyone knows what the ramifications of drinking it are. Like, it doesn't really need explained even to children most of the time. Maybe like actual children, but you know, young teens, which is more what we're referring to here as children. It doesn't need explained as much. Whereas when you're marketing a gamer drink to make you better at games with all these like candy flavors from an audience that already markets to the younger crowd, it gets a lot more muddy. Like I said, it is... Thin lines, everyone draws the lines differently for themselves. If you can sleep at night, whatever. But for me, 
it's just too much. It's and every single drink company is either sponsoring someone absolutely terrible, like Keemstar with G Fuel. They may be broken up now, but like it was so long. There was no excuse. There was no point in G Fuel's existence that Keemstar was an appropriate channel to sponsor. We had, you know, someone like Keemstar or someone not that horrible, but still not someone that most people want to work with after they have worked with that person. Pretty much every energy or like gamer drink company has worked with someone like that or either stolen art from streamers or creators or whatever that like there's no good company to work with in that field in the first place. And then I get a bunch of emails that are like, we got that caffeinated gamer gum now. You want some chewing gum for the gamers? And I'm sitting here like, well, my audience is streamers. And if I tell people to chew gum while they're streaming, that's going to create a whole terrible thing. On top of the fact, no, you don't need caffeine to focus unless you have a focus problem, in which case, seek treatment, even if it's not drugs, behavioral treatment. <laughs> you don't need caffeine all the time. That creates terrible habits. It's just, ugh. And then there was new ones that was uh, abusing, I forgot the exact term, but there's this weird new therapy technique that's mainly focused on trauma, and in the wrong hands, it, it's literally a dangerous therapy technique. It involves, like, sensation and neural beats and stuff together. And they were advertising it as like a focusing thing where it's like, we can improve your processing power. And I'm just like, that sounds terrible. No. <laughs> you know, you say that yet yeah, nicotine usage in teenagers is skyrocketing. Is it? Is it? I thought smoking had finally become uncool. Is it because of vaping? Has vaping made it popular? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. Teens, why? I mean, I know it was growing. That's why we get all the, like, the, the... I forgot the company. The the message. The, the like, MTV No Drugs commercials that we got as kids. Like, suddenly we're seeing those on the Game Awards and stuff again. But, like... Oh, that's awful. Galaxy Zog with the Tier 1 gifted sub to Teresa's! I think the problem is, is the gaps in education. So uh, this is going to be my last piece I say before we actually start working on the desk. Because I said when we came back it was going to be serious. I think we're seeing a repeat cycle. And I could, I could, like I have, I used to be a huge, hey what's up daddy? Thanks for saving me from buying garbage. I'm sorry. I need to scratch my back for a second. Yeah. Anyway, what was that? I... I know just enough about history because I uh, used to be a huge history nerd and study it to like pick up on trends and like recognize them, but I don't keep actively studying it enough to immediately have like sources and references available for you. But I think we see repeat trends every couple generations where we effectively forget knowledge for the youngins and we end up facing similar problems over again. And I think we saw this with the move from Gen X, which was the 70s and 80s kids, to like kind of skipping millennials, because millennials, most of us heard the same messaging over and over, grew up in the same time, learned all these things. And now the Zoomers and the next generation were not given those things. And this applies specifically in areas that I'm interested in. Well, one that I'm actually interested in and the one relevant to this conversation is of course smoking. The second one being actually like tech education. And I know that sounds weird, but like I, I've talked about this all the time. I'm getting more and more confirmation effectively that kids are being raised or like not raised, but well, raised, I guess. But, you know, you have the trope of kids just being thrown on iPads as babysitters and assumed that everyone knows how to use these things because they've been using them since they were toddlers. And in school, everyone assumes that kids grow up with all this technology, they know how to use it. When they don't, they were never taught how to use it. Whereas the previous generation were, grew up having to learn it as the teachers learned it, basically, or getting taught it because it was this fancy new thing that was required curriculum because everyone had to learn how to use computers because that was how you got a job, supposedly. Or we just grew up teaching the teachers. And in the Windows 98 and XP era, like, everything was troubleshooting. So, like, you were constantly fixing everything anyway. And then everyone kind of assumed, okay, the next generation is just somehow born with this knowledge. And they don't teach it anymore. And now we're seeing huge, huge consequences of that in terms of 
I don't know the exact word, it's not coming to my head, but the gap, the knowledge gap, the information gap of kids not actually knowing what to do, how to troubleshoot technology, whatever. I think the same thing happened with smoking. I'm making that connection now, in that my generation grew up with ads on every TV channel a kid would watch and channels adults and teens would watch. Ads against smoking, you had constant messaging, we had say no to drugs in school, we had characters for it, we had school assemblies constantly. And they're like, self-congratulating everyone, like, yay, we convinced the kids to stop smoking. Smoking plummeted in popularity, it wasn't the cool punk thing anymore. Now it was being straight edge or whatever the hell. And I guess they just assumed that we learned our lesson and smoking was gonna die. And now it's become a cool thing again because they found a new way to tell your kids to smoke. With vapor. <sighs> Needless to say, the last five to ten years have taught us that assuming anyone knows anything is always the wrong way to go. Kids are also still aren't being taught the how to avoid the dangers of being online. Seriously. Like, it's probably more dangerous now, and the assumption that you, like, meet up IRL and stuff is more prevalent, despite the fact that it was com a complete Wild West when we were growing up, and everyone, like, assumed that every person you met online was the here to kidnap and kill you. <laughs> we had the Stranger Danger era in the late 90s and early 2000s, and that seems to have gone away, too, even though there's more Stranger Danger probably now than before. Ugh, it's terrifying, and I don't know what the solution is, because it keeps happening, so clearly generations just assume people know stuff, but like, my focus, my offering that I hope to contribute back to the world is I want to figure out how to tackle the tech ed problem and help integrate that back into helping kids learn technology, because some of the things like avoiding the dangers of the internet and avoiding the misinformation and avoiding the propaganda and e evaluating sources and all of that, that comes from, in, in one way, I mean, some of it comes from critical thinking, which is not taught well enough in schools in the first place. And Indiana specifically just tried passing a bill to literally prevent that from ever happening. But it also comes from not teaching the technology. When someone isn't taught what webs, and part of this comes from like the, the conglomeration of websites where every single website wants to be everything for you. But when you're not taught the difference between like, a social media site and a news site and how to evaluate different sources and how to check for validity of your information and all of that. When some random person posts a video of a video game saying, pray for Ukraine, give me lots of money on TikTok, a bunch of kids just think it's real because they were never taught not to trust people and throw money at all these scams. And that was just the most recent example, but there's always been stuff like that. And it just comes from like, they're never taught to think twice about it because their parents, like, Obviously, all parenting styles are different. People went through different things. But, like, my parents were terrified of me being on so early social media. We're talking early, early Friendster, MySpace, tagged, stuff like that. Facebook had only come around as I was finishing high school and just kind of jumped on it anyway. My parents were terrified of that because that's how you meet strangers and pedophiles and get kidnapped. And I need to just not put my life out there until I'm an adult and can make those decisions. I did it anyway, but that was the thing. While there are still obviously parenting styles and policies in place that where parents don't want their kids on social media, at least until they're like 15 or 12 or something. They're just left to their own devices on websites that are trusted, which include Facebook if they're allowed on it and Instagram. Like once they evaluate, like validate that it's from a big company or it's a website they've heard of or Karen on Facebook said it was fine. They're not monitored. They're not guided. They're not checked up on. They're just left to their own devices on there. And it's just... I don't know. There's a, there's a lot that needs worked on. And I don't know. I don't know. And it's really interesting because Teresa's just brought up uh, death threats and stuff. Cyberbullying is a thing again. I remember cyberbullying when we were kids as a thing pe people struggled with. But most of us saw, most of us saw it as a joke. And a big difference of that comes into how you used the internet back in the day. And this is like the big mind-blowing realization I had a few months ago. 
when I was really trying to think about the differences and stuff, in that the internet in the 90s and the early 2000s, and for some people even the early 2010s, was something you logged into. You had to take a process, and back in the early days, it was literally like you had to listen to screeching sounds for it to connect, so it was a long process. But you had a process to where you had to connect to the internet, and then you had a limited time and a limited situation to do your business on the internet, and then you logged off of the internet. And anything that happened on the internet stayed on the internet. So yes, it could still hurt, there could still be drama, whatever, when cyberbullying happened. But for the most part, other than a couple choice horror stories of it, it wasn't a big deal. Today, you don't log into the internet. Today, not being on the internet, like for five minutes, is considered an outage. It's considered going off the grid. It's considered a bad thing. The internet is everywhere. It's in everything. It surrounds us, and it takes over our life. And I don't mean to sound super paranoid or schizo about it. That was not meant to be derogatory. I don't mean to sound like super paranoid or freaked out about it so much as it's just the realism of how it's going, is the internet is everywhere. You are expected to be on the internet all the time, every day, in every capacity. Every action you do is tied to the internet, which means you don't have that separation. You don't have the ability to be like, oh, the kids from school are saying mean stuff on my MySpace wall. I can just close it and go do something else. Because for a lot of people who don't turn off settings or whatever, you're getting a constant onslaught of notifications about it, and then what you're expected to do in your day-to-day -day life still involves that. And that lack of separ separation has brought so many, pro both revived problems and brought so many problems that I don't know what the fix is because I believe so many things were better when we didn't have the always online capability. I remember my entire world changed when I could suddenly have constant internet in my room. And even then my mom kept trying to limit it by only letting me have access to a Wi-Fi dongle sometimes. Eventually that changed, but like, it was game-changing, but also, you could probably track a lot of problems coming up as a result of it. I don't know what the solution is, because it would have to be a societal shift, and like, philosophies and everything, and I don't know that we're gonna have that until some groundbreaking, horrible thing happens. Or social media just implodes. But, a lot has come from it that we don't benefit from. We get a lot from it, but there's a lot that we don't benefit from. How's it going, live action pixel? Nothing much here. We're supposed to be working on my desk. Instead, I'm ranting about the existential dread of internet connectivity and smoking and cyberbullying, and I don't even know how we got here at this point. Hi, also love the way your overlay looks like my last PC. I used to have it when I turned it on. Yeah, it's retro PC theme. It's the uh, stream OS overlay from Nerd or Die. You can hit that up at, I think, I think I can send a command. Nope. Okay. Uh, eposvox.gg slash nerd or die. Save 15%. Uh, I'm in the trailer. I have my own custom version. I still haven't implemented yet because stream elements, but yeah. Do you think the always on social media era is the cause of the rise of anxiety and depression in teens? Do you want it to add it to Nightbot? Yes, please. Uh, yes, I do believe it is. I think a lot of it comes from... So, I think the problem is the question's a little skewed, because... Ah, uh, okay. So this gets really complicated. I don't want to dive too deep, because someone's gonna, as... Keeps happening for the past month, someone's gonna find a way to take it out of context and make a big deal about it. We have seen a couple trends, a few trends, in teen culture since the early 2000s with the rise of the internet and how social change has happened as a result. We see... LGBT identity spike and become kind of a trend or culture because it's more normalized, because people feel safer to do so. And that comes from the connectivity and also the social change that comes from it. But that also turns it into a slightly trendy thing, just how being emo was trendy back in the day for like people pretending to cut themselves, even though not everyone struggled with that, just some people did, but it became a culture. Doesn't mean the people who went through it aren't legit, doesn't mean it's not great that like Okay, for cutting yourself, obviously not. But for, like, LGBT identification, obviously, super great that it's getting better. But, like, there is some trendy aspect to it. We're seeing the same thing where a lot more cases of ADHD, of anxiety, of depression is becoming... Mental health is becoming more standardized, which means people are more aware of it. People are more... feel safer to talk about it. People have more resources at their disposal to learn about it and to express their identity with it. But yes, I also agree 
that the constant pressures and strain and distractions and everything else going on also increases the cases of it actually happening in the first place. We got a raid from X. It's XNDR. Raid. Thank you so much for the raid. I hope you all are having a wonderful evening. We're actually supposed to be completely dismantling my desk so I can be building up a new set up here for some of my artsy goodness. Uh, but instead I'm ranting about the existential dread of what the internet used to be like. Let's not forget a people's short attention span. Exactly. I think I don't give life advice often. But if I were to instill a piece of life advice on anyone younger or I guess older than myself, it would be to turn off every possible notification you ever can on mobile, on desktop, on Xbox, on your microwave. <laughs> Turn off push notifications. Phone calls, voicemails, text messages. That's all you ever need on your phone. Obviously, there are work exceptions. If you got to be on call, whatever. For your average person, especially in like school, turn off every possible notification and you instantly have a massive quality of life improvement. Except, yes, except Epos's go live and video post notifications. <laughs> Dude, okay, ice. So, my microwave, we, we we had a great microwave that I kept from when I was a kid. Like, it was the baller, I think it was 1200 or 1500 watt. It cooked shit so fast. And then we ended up killing it at our second apartment. I think it was, yeah, I think our second apartment. I kept the things, we had it, like, my entire life. My parents wanted to get rid of it. I kept it until I moved out. It was the best thing ever. We got a new one, and it bugs the crap out of me that even a new microwave keeps beeping after you open the door. Our old microwave didn't do this. This one does. It should not keep beeping telling you it's done once you open the door because you already know it's done. Especially if you're trying to be sneaky at night, heat something up and be quiet about it. If you don't get to it before it, you know, at the one second mark, you're just making a lot of unnecessary beeps. Anyway, <laughs> it's XNDR. Glad I could raid you tonight. You have helped me so much over the years with my stream setup. Super glad to help. Hope you had a wonderful stream. Hope it went great. Appreciate you sharing your viewers with me. Uh, by the way, I guess I can show off for you all real quick. If you missed it from the earlier stream, take a look at the future of my studio setups. Now, the studio has been under construction. I have ran nearly 1,500 feet of Ethernet, so everything's a dumpster fire. That's part of what today's stream is supposed to be, is fixing it up. But I have moved... Whoa. Hold on. Audio silent. Okay. I have moved my entire studio to network cameras. So, like, even this camera right here is connected to the network instead of direct connected. And if I go over here to this scene, this is the NDI Studio Monitor software. Make sure you can see here. I have all of these cameras and desktops available over the network that I can then mix and show in stream. So we've got uh, PTZ cameras that I can control and move around and zoom in on. You can see the bread that was submitted in one of our streams earlier in January. That's a lot of zoom. We've got the main retro setup cam. Obviously, again, everything is a disaster right now. We've got, that one's dead. We've got the main PTZ camera that I use for this side of things that I can show you all more of the mess. Again, we have been under construction on top of all the videos. I've got the workbench. Oh, that's the one I showed you. The wire, nope, that one's dead as well. Where is the other overhead? Here it is. We've got the overhead setup for the workbench. Uh, I turned those lights back off, but it also has optical zoom. It does not have pan and tilt, though. We've got the webcam for the glitch art setup over here. We've got desktop captures. We've got a dedicated webcam mounted on my LG CX. We got the overhead setup for my Pokemon unboxings and openings and stuff. That is also on an optical zoom now instead of the crappy G7 that I had before. We've got the wide angle lens over on the retro side. And of course, we have everything from this desktop as well, which is pretty wild. So I still have a lot of work ahead of me in terms of getting everything like fully connected in terms of, uh, sorry, I'm trying to get back to the right camera I wanted controlled for later. I don't, oh, there it is. In terms of getting audio going, because I'm also trying to get one giant audio interface that all of my XLR cables across the whole studio run into and get managed. Um, 
and then, you know, getting the multi-view set up so I can show you all at once. I still need to get the the Twiddler set up so I can control it when I'm moving around. The PTZ cameras have auto tracking. I got to get that set up. But we are so close. It's going to be so good. So I'm super stoked for that. But that is part of what we're supposed to be working on today. Not that we have a whole lot of time between my kid waking up and all that. Like, we're limited on time. That's what we're starting today is switching over the desk to be more functional because I have had, as I explained last time, I'm not going to go too into detail, but half of my desk has been basically completely useless this in for like over a year. And we need to fix that. Really appreciate the raid. Hope you all are having a wonderful evening. Appreciate y'all who hang out with us on these late night streams with some late night vibes. February was hell. I just kind of put my head down and went through it. So apologies for the lack of streams, but we will be picking it up uh, and doing more moving forward. Need to rig up the stream deck pedals to a hoverboard so we can do some on the go wizardry. Oh my God. I would die. I would trip over everything and die. This is some Five Night at Freddy's type mon camera monitoring. Oh, you joke. But I totally am going to get, once I get the multi-view, like, capturable to stream, I'm going to get some sort of, like, night trap kind of, like, theme overlay going where it looks like it's a big security CRT wall. Should be sick. All right, so let's start actually tackling the desk. I moved some stuff off stream while I was waiting to make sure the kid went to sleep uh, before I started streaming and he started crying or something. So I need to tweak this camera angle a tad. I can. That's a little better. So I'm trying to figure out the optimal, I guess, idea to do here. So step one, we take out the test bench. It is a massive eyesore and eats up a lot of space. And like I said, I can completely and utterly replace it with the Intel NUC now. Step two, I guess, is pulling all this off so we can see what really needs to stay over here. The Herman with the Prime sub three months. Woo! Thank you. Thank you, brother. Hope you're having a wonderful evening. Appreciate you. By the way, if you do subscribe here on Twitch, you get a secret access to a very secret channel on our Discord server. Actually, it's a few channels. You you unlock the keys to paradise. I'm sorry, I probably just close up the mic there. So, we need to move the test bench out. We need to get some of this junk off to see the space we're working with, because we want to preserve some of what's here. We need to rewire the whole mixer and move all the extra uh, ground loop isolators and stuff under the desk. I actually bought a shelf for that that I've yet to hang up. And then we got to see if we can place the glitch art stuff here. My concern, the last bit of explaining before we jump into it. Here, let me pull up the PTZ cam. This will help me illustrate. Oh, I had two of these open. That's my bad. All right, so if I zoom in over here, I can show you all. All right, so. All of this, all of my glitch art setup is powered from this giant video matrix. It's an Extron MAV Plus series video matrix. It's 64 in, 64 out. I have it wired to the TV wall with all the CRTs. I have it wired to all of my glitch art hardware here and my stack of VCRs that I run for VHS captures and stuff because I do actual high quality VHS captures on top of the glitch art. The problem is I thought this would be the great final like setup for this place and I have run 10 50 foot RCA cable runs from the CRT wall to this mixer. Now, I do have a little bit of slack, although it's going to be hell to pull it through the hooks. Like, it was awful to run that. Uh, probably won't be, definitely won't be able to be done today. But I have a little bit of slack. But we got to find somewhere that this thing can sit if we're moving the controllers over here. And that's going to be the biggest problem. Now, this thing can be controlled over Ethernet. I still need to plug it in and see if I can get... Some way to rig it up to a macro pad or a stream deck or something. And then I don't need the buttons at all, even though I've already started stickering it, but whatever. That's the idyllic situation. And then I can probably just sit it on top of the VHS stack and just leave it out of the way. And of course, the glitch art computer is still over here. And it's fairly tightly integrated, so I'm probably not going to move it. 
So there's some weird considerations here where I have limited my options, even though I am fairly certain that the best option is having my glitch art controllers over here where I can just sit down and chill on my work. So either we're going to see how far we can move this and see, and like, we're probably just going to have to get some extra long cable runs to run to this side of the desk. So I'm going to need to buy yet another round of RCA cables. I'm not looking forward to having to rewire this a fourth time. But this isn't working for me, and I need to, like, address that so I can actually sit down and do some freaking art. Because, by the way... We have a Patreon for my glitch art at patreon.gg, or patreon.com. I don't know why I say gg, because all my other links are gg. Patreon.com slash glitch art. I need to be delivering to you all. Now, I have been, but I want to do more. I want to do so much more. All right, so that's enough talk. Glitch art streams. Yeah, I want to do more actual streams of glitch art. Y'all freaking loved that. I want to do more glitch art streams and less streams of, like, is it possible to get Prince of Glitch Art? Yes, I am actually going to set up a tier for that Patreon for Prince. I just want to experiment with getting them done first. Like, Rob Sheridan does his, but he home prints them. And I'm not sure I want to invest in a full photo printer lab setup kind of thing. Especially because where am I going to put it? But I want to experiment with some services for it to where I can get the right, like, texture and grit to it that I want. But I'm 100% like, I want to get prints of this stuff for myself. And I want to be able to share it, offer it as a Patreon tier as well. So, I think that would be really fucking cool. But yeah, I'd love to do more streams of actually making my art instead of talking about drama. Or, or, these weird back scratchers that people keep sending to my P.O. Box. They're not very useful. I mean, they, they kind of get the spot, but... I don't know, man. I think it's a better doorstop. I'm gonna stop with that now. I'm sorry. It's just fun. Like, I think the more of a dead horse it is, the funnier it is, just because... I don't know. I'm done. I'm sorry. Alright, moving on. In print. Ooh, hang on. Before we go, let me pull that up just so I have it. In print. Gallery quality art prints. The question is, are they reasonable for me to distribute within a Patreon tier? Alright, I at least have a tab pulled up for it. I'll, we'll look into it later. Hashtag not dumb. <laughs> Alright, so. Let's dive through. I can do this too. Thank you, Evermedia Arm. It's so flexible. This is not sponsored, and the first one they literally sent me was broken. But, it's so good. All right, let's dive into what's on the workbench, or studio here. Desk. Words are hard. This is a desk. This is not a workbench. It's not a studio itself. It's a desk. So, the test bench that I use and have here is the Praxis Wet Bench. It's been okay. It honestly hasn't been that amazing. I'm not super impressed with it, but I, I, I bought this back in like 2018, 2019. I spent a good long while looking for not terribly priced, reasonable, but also useful test benches. I had another one. It was terrible. I hated it. And this was like the best option anyone could recommend. It's been okay, but it's also designed for, like, custom loop water cooling for some reason, which makes no sense to me. So, attaching normal stuff to it has kind of been annoying. First time watching your stream. Hello! What's going on? Hello! We are tearing apart my desk so I can rebuild it because this entire side has never really been all that useful. So, we are pulling out the old, putting in the new, just studio maintenance. Not to mention, this takes up a fair bit of space, and it's awkward because it pretty much always has to be desk space. Like, I'm so done with this, I'm so glad to replace it with the knock. Oh yeah, someone else had asked, or someone had asked before, about using vmix versus obs for this kind of setup another reason i don't want to use vmix 
is I want to be able to set up streamer bot so you all can switch between all the 50 million different camera angles whenever I move like this. And I can't do that with vMix. So there's a lot going in OBS's favor. Even though, on, like, I would have told you on a surface level they were built for opposite things, for the, for the opposite reasons, I think vMix makes the most sense for me for recording videos, and OBS makes the most sense for streaming. Even though vMix is a broadcasting app, and while OBS is obviously built for streaming, it's got a lot of good recording features. Seems to be the opposite. Also, vMix doesn't have the dropped frame issues with capture cards I keep running into, so that's been really fascinating to track. They use MMF, I think, Media, Microsoft Media Foundation or whatever, instead of Direct Show, and I believe that makes the difference. All right, I know it doesn't look super big with the big wide-angle camera. That is a lot of space that that ate up. Like, I used to have a whole giant 21-inch CRT, that one right there sitting here like that is a lot of space that just freed up here now the mixer I can't get rid of yet I think long term it won't well does it need to be in my setup anymore in the short term I want to use it for instrument inputs and stuff but like I could move Ooh, all right if I'm not going to use the mixer for PC audio which theoretically I don't need to anymore if I move all the glitch art stuff over here, the mixer can sit on this little table that all the glitch art stuff's right on right now. So we might be ditching the mixer. The problem is, I can't ditch it yet because all my sound, like my, my speaker sound and stuff is running through it. But we can start pulling off the extra pieces that we're not using in the meantime. If you have any questions about how any of this is set up or the decision making, or if you have suggestions for how to best organize shit, leave it in chat. I am here for it. Also, we are gonna switch, I apologize, uh, since I am using this for a potential desk update video, we're just gonna go full screen for this. Makes helps you all see it better anyway. By the way, this tripod, this is the crap. What's it called? Slick pod, stealth pod. Um, what the hell is it called? Sly pod? No. It was made by Caleb Waljic. It was like a by YouTubers for YouTubers kind of thing. Oh, hang on. Ugh. I don't know how to moderate in this tiny Twitch chat view. There we go. <laughs> like it doesn't pull up. It's super weird. I see it when I'm moderating other people's channels. But when I'm in my own, I don't have the buttons that pop up that usually pop up to like delete messages and kick people and stuff. I don't know. I don't. This is why I have mods. Anyway, this is the Slick Pod, Stealth Pod, Sly Pod. I forgot the name of it, but it is a built by creators for creators tripod. That is the best little like alternative to the Gorilla Pod because the Gorilla Pod is secretly actually bad uh, that you'll ever get because it's made of metal. So it's not gonna like fall apart. Um, it's got grips for your hands. It has a tightening knob to twist into your camera instead of having to spin your camera. It works best with a ball head. You don't need one when I have a GoPro on it. Um, but, and you can freaking whip it out, set it down or keep it black or back and like vlog with it. It is, and it works as like a camera stabilizer cause you can be like points of contact, stealthy shot. Stable shot. Um, I don't know why I'm not remembering the damn name of it. It is S something pod. Hang on. The switch pod. That's what it's called. The switch pod. Okay, here it is. I don't think there's an affiliate link. I don't think they sell it on retail. They, I got mine on a Kickstarter. Um, I don't know where they're selling it at the moment. Here, I'll just I'll just post this in chat. You can at least rabbit hole it from there. I hate strings. They're always hitting me and distracting me. And my kid pulls on them. Anyway. But yeah, that's the rabbit hole to go down. 
All right, let's keep ripping stuff out. It is the best little mini handheld tripod you're ever gonna see. Twitch auto hides moderator controls by default when in moderation mode. What? What? Damn it, Twitch. Why? Uh, switchpod.co. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's it. Yup. It's like pricey, but... And don't buy their ball head if you can find it cheaper, because you can just get a newer ball head and it's fine. Uh, but yeah, it is the last little mini tripod you will ever buy. Unless you need something super tiny for a webcam. Like, if you were looking at the Gorillapod, you're gonna buy a bunch of Gorillapods because they're gonna keep breaking and not do what you want. That's gonna last forever because it's freaking metal. Yeah. Capture cards, PC Panel Pro. Stuff from previous videos where I was covering them. Metal! Just like Backing Track, our stream safe, royalty free, video safe, podcast safe music. You can download at backingtrack.gg. Yeah! We got ground loop isolators. Oh, yeah. I think Gorillapod was super popular because it was basically the only option in its niche. I got one, well, I got a knockoff one, and mine was completely useless from the start, but I've seen people who, like, there's breaks, break within a couple months. All right, we're going to take the synth stuff out for now. Uh, also, that's another reason to keep the mixer is I still need somewhere to plug this in, but we're going to take it out for now so we can put it back once we're ready. So I have a bunch of inputs wired here for running to all the multiple PCs that I'm no longer screwing with. So like half of these aren't even connected anymore. So we're just unwiring all of these. And like assuming I ever get my Threadripper Pro workstation set up, I have the CPU. I'm waiting on motherboard from Asus and then I probably need to buy a new RAM kit. Assuming I ever get that set up going, uh, I will be able to use the Beacon Mix Create again, but my current setup keeps disconnecting the bottom PCIe slot, which is where the USB card is that runs the Beacon Mix Create because their drivers can't run on AMD for some reason. So I can't even use that right now. Right. Oh man, podcast that's dropped a re-review of the Q2. Yeah! So I am working on re-reviews of the big three mics that I covered kind of at the start of my audio video career. Not the start of my YouTube career, but me covering microphones. I was super proud of the videos at the time. It was the most effort I had been able to put into with my new camera for like B-roll and everything. And like, I thought they were great, but I made some really questionable decisions with uh, post-processing, of course, and things like that. And I had very little experience compared to what I do now. I have no clue why Electro Voice took a risk on me, but they did. They've been great supporters of the channel ever since. Uh, but I'm going to work on re-reviewing the Electrovoice RE20, the RE320, and the Rode Procaster with my updated, you know, experience and understanding and EQing skills. And I think I might have talked Mike Delgadio from Booth Junkies into coming on to talk about the RE20, so that one will be amazing. So stay tuned for that. But yes, also, uh, after so many years... Your perceptions of the value or whatever of microphones and stuff change. I still think the Procaster is a completely underrated microphone. And I think it's I think it's weirdly even more underrated now uh, than it was back in the day. Because back in the day it was one of the few affordable dynamic microphone options. It's it was it's two hundred bucks. And at the time, like, it was that 
or an RE20 or SM7B or, you know, the expensive electric voice mics or the SM7B. So, like, it was the only cheap dynamic mic option that was actually worth using, at least that people knew about. But then Rode came out with the pod mic. The pod mic is not a great microphone. It's a good mic for 100 bucks, given that's all you can afford and given that you haven't tried anything else. And that's basically everyone's journey with it. People will vehemently defend it when they've not used anything else and because it's the only thing they bought, so they have to defend the thing they bought. But time after time, especially with like the beginner YouTubers and streamers, you will see people who are like, yeah, this is the mic I use because it's, it's the best option because it's only 99 bucks. And then they're like, wow, this background noise is really annoying. I need to buy a cloud lifter or a fed head. There's another hundred bucks. And then they're like, wow, I'm really tired of this. And then you see like they run like... Like, they'll have the pod mic for like six to eight months and then they never look back. Because it's not a great microphone. Just because something's cheap doesn't mean the scale of how good it is actually changes. And when it costs another hundred, unless you bought an expensive Go XLR or something, you need another hundred bucks to actually power the damn thing, then you've already spent two hundred bucks and you're still not getting great sound out of it. And it's heavy as hell. What's up, Tyrion Kent? What's up, Thindle? Thank you for stopping by the streams. Yes, if the if the Rode Pod mic was 60 bucks, even 70 bucks, I would say for the price, it's probably pretty good. I would still personally recommend going with the Q2U over it. People go with the Pod mic because it looks like a podcaster's mic versus the Q2U looks like a stage mic. When you don't care about looks over function, the Q2U is a better microphone. And more flexible because it doesn't require a $100 mic booster. It doesn't even require an interface at all. You can start over USB and then upgrade your audio interface or mixer later on. The pod mic is a waste of money. And I don't care what other blonde dude wants to jump up here and say that I'm a fraud because I don't like a microphone and felt like I like it more based on or dislike it more based on seeing the roller coaster of a response graph it has. It's not a great microphone. It's decent. It's not great. I like my NT-USB. I have heard great things about the NT-USB. It is on my list to review. I am stoked for it. I also have the NT-1USB. No, the NT-USB. So I have the NT-USB and the Mini. I still need to get my hands on the actual NT-1. I think... So like, I've heard good things about the NT-USB, but like, it clearly fits within a certain class of microphone. And so I never really took it super seriously based on that. Not your parents, GNS, with another raid! Thank you so much. I hope you two had an incredible stream. Thank you for stopping by. We are just tearing out my desk here. So, just exposing myself to the world. And ranting about microphones. And dawn of the internet or something what's up thank you for stopping by nice I love a good exposure <laughs> were there people who were pissed about using the Q2U over USB on my server I didn't know that thank you for the tier 1 sub gift Self-gifting subs over here. <laughs> I appreciate you all so much. You two are amazing. By the way, if you haven't already, go check out the Not Your Parents GNS Twitch channel. Lovely couple, do some awesome streams. And are one of the, like, awesome examples of how to do a co-op stream. How's your day? My day's alright. Doing alright. Got... To Got to get some sun, take my kid out to the park. He tried to, or he sort of made a friend. So he's obviously not had a whole lot of social exposure due to pandemic. But he, like every time we've taken him places where he sees a kid, he clearly desperately like wants to go say hi or whatever. So we took him to a local park just to get him out of the house and whatever. And some other kids ended up showing up that were about his age. And this one little girl who was probably like, our kid's about to be two. This little girl couldn't have been more than three. She was smaller than him, but she was talking up a storm. And it, uh, her kid's not talking a whole lot yet. 
and she was heartbroken because he got super shy because a, bu- a couple kids showed up and while he wants to like be close to them, he doesn't really know how to interact yet because he hasn't had a lot of time. So even though he's constantly saying hi to us, he like wouldn't really engage with her. And she was like heartbroken at first. She, she like kept going up and like saying hi and trying to talk to him or whatever. And he'd just be like, and then she ended up getting real sad and going to, I think it was her grandma she was with, and her grandma was just like, what's wrong? And why are you sad? And she's just like, he won't say hi to me. And we were just like, oh. He ended up waving bye to her when we left, though. Well, that's really weird, Teresa. I have no idea. I mean, like... It, it, admittedly, it does technically sound worse over USB, but it's, like, my thing is, so, my thing is, with cheap stuff, as I just probably said based on the pod mic, spending money to get slightly better quality now, rather than saving money and getting much better quality later, is a dumb decision. It is a dumb decision. Buying a pod mic is a waste of money, as I just said. Buying something... Okay. I have to walk this back a little bit because I literally recommended this in my Q2U video, which is why I should probably re-review it as well, taking a note from Bandrew. But... I have since changed my mind, and I believe that buying a cheapo interface, like the Behringer UM2... You came here on the raid. Heck yeah. Buying a cheapo interface like the Behringer UM2 with a microphone that has dual USB and XLR is a complete waste of money unless you need the extra features of the interface, which with something like the UM2, there probably aren't any. So, I firmly believe that now. My previous video did not say that, but I do believe that now because, you, yes, you are getting an ever so slight increase in quality, but then you are spending more money to basically get yourself stuck because then you're not going to want to upgrade interfaces because you already bought one when you didn't need to buy one. Start out with the Q2U or the MV7 over USB and then save up for a good interface like the Audient Evo 4, the, I can't really show you this because my mic's plugged into it, the PreSonus Revelator IO44, something awesome like that and you will immediately have far better results. It's supposed to be, so... The thinking process when you're buying gear, especially on a budget, is min-maxing what you can get for it. And everyone falls into the trap of thinking they're min-maxing by buying a bunch of cheap gear compounded rather than setting themselves up for the opportunity of upgrading later. Which means if you're buying a cheap microphone and you have the opportunity to use it without an interface, buying the cheapest interface you can get your hands on is probably not a good use of your money. Whereas making a trade-off of like cheap to good Like, pair a cheap thing with a good thing, buy whatever the good thing you can and get the cheap thing, then you upgrade the cheap thing to another good thing, and then down the line you can upgrade the already good thing to a better thing. See what I'm saying? Whereas if you just go cheap cheap, then you've already put yourself out more money, and it's much harder to pick what you're actually getting. Because what usually ends up happening is you buy a cheap ass interface with the Q2U, and then you're like, I want to improve audio quality. Everyone jumps to microphones, and then they're like, let's get an SM7B with my uh, UM2 audio interface. And that don't work. And then they're having even more headache or problems. You have to balance it out. Is there a good way to improve mic quality from a distance? Uh, most of that comes from choosing the correct microphone type in the first place because dynamic microphones are not built to be used especially off camera at all they're built built dynamic this isn't a dynamic but it's set up like one but a dynamic mic is meant to be used from like right here my voice is still out guys right here to maybe right here at most that is probably the most length you should get with a dynamic three fists two fists is more ideal if you want that proximity effect you want to get right up on it I can't wait to finish being unsick. I finally got some antibiotics. Anyway, um, so condenser mics are going to do better, but shotgun mics are going to do best because what happens is not only, of course, do you have to project more to get your voice picked up at a distance or otherwise increase gain, 
But the more you move your mic away from you, the more your reflections bounce off of your desk and your monitors and stuff. And those sources are closer to your microphone. My monitor is now closer to the microphone than I am, which means it's going to hit it first. The reflection off of it's going to hit it first and potentially stronger. The Yeti, uh, the Yeti off camera is kind of the cliche, not to be insulting you specifically, but is the cliche like wrong placement microphone, which is why everyone started hating Yetis because everyone bought Yetis based on people using it like this and then put it off camera and it sounds terrible. So other than, you know, getting a desk mat, putting sound foam up and trying to treat your environment to make it as high quality as possible, choosing an angle. So getting a microphone arm that can come up over here and like, instead of putting your microphone right in front of your computer monitor right here out of frame or something, put it over here where there's maybe a bigger void or you can put up some sound foam or some books on a bookshelf. You know, choosing your positioning a little bit better so it's not directly up against Reflection Central here is a good way that you can practically do that without buying a new microphone. You can improve it that way. But otherwise, you're going to need some serious de-reverb or noise suppression plugins and some projecting technique, but also not projecting too much that you're hitting the monitor too hard. It, it's hard. That's not what the microphone is built for. Your new Aver stands hold the RE20? Yes, it holds the RE20 with the shock mount. I will say in my unboxing video, I had a defective one. This whole head kept spinning without me cranking on it. They sent me a replacement. Works perfectly now. But yes, if you are... Okay, I will say this right now. To... Well, who, who was it again? I'm sorry, the chat scrolled. Teak the Gamer. If you can afford a $20 lavalier mic that you can just run into, like, your audio interface or to a mic in on your computer or something, assuming you can get the ground loop isolating noises and stuff done, if you can afford a $20 lav mic off of Amazon, it's going to sound better than putting your Blue Yeti at a distance. So keep that in mind. Uh, a lot of people get caught up in... Uh, crap, what's it called? The the diminishing return... Nope. Uh, cutting your losses. Uh, sunk cost fallacy. So many people... Sorry. I'm super sleepy. So many people get caught up in sunk cost fallacy of, I have this thing, I gotta stick with this thing, how can I use the thing, even if it's against its purpose. A lavalier mic, which you can get super cheap. Don't buy a cheap shotgun mic. Those are never good. But a cheap lavalier mic, clip to, clip to your shirt, you know, underneath or whatever, ran to your computer, you're, you're going to be stuck with a wired one in most cases for cheap ones. But a $20 lav mic with some, you know, some tweaking and some practice and whatever is going to sound significantly better than a shouting into a Blue Yeti across your desk. It's going to be a different sound because it's a tiny microphone and cheap labs don't sound amazing, but you can EQ it to sound a little bit better and you're going to not pick up any of that room sound comparatively. So that is my advice is genuinely... Just go with a lav mic. Use your Yeti for a podcast or wherever you can do it up close, but don't... Don't try to... Don't put a square peg in a round hole or whatever. I mean, Yetis still have brand awareness, and the mics themselves are fine. Like, a Yeti is a fine mic, but... It, it gained notoriety for people trying to use it in a way it's not meant to be used. They gave up on a project that about 250 million. Whoo! Whoo! Yes, okay. Those are some big balls. All right, all right, all right, chat. Let's not, let's not make fun of someone for using a Yeti. There is nothing wrong with that. And I know a couple content creators who, who have ran their entire career with like successful channels using a Yeti. There is no reason to shame someone or make fun of someone for a microphone. Not okay. You get out. <laughs> no. It is a decent quality condenser microphone. The only reason people think bad of it now after years of people acting like it was the best mic on earth was because a bunch of people decided the SM7B was the next mic, next mic to praise and because a bunch of people started using it wrong. The Yeti is fine. Making fun of someone with the Yeti, not not fine. <sighs> I 
They might have already left, though. That's disappointing. Hopefully they got some helpful out. Helpfulness? Help? Help? Advice out of that? From what I initially gave? Who the heck makes fun of someone based on their mic choice? The same people who make fun of people based on their frame rates or graphics cards or whatever. <clears throat> if you're gonna make fun of a microphone someone uses, don't. They have all sorts of good uses. Alright, let's go back to pulling cables. Glad to help, Danny Draymond. Would you still say the Mixed Create is good? Absolutely. I'd be using it right now to control the stream if it cooperated with AMD drivers. Chipsets. But otherwise, yeah, it's a freaking awesome product, and I will be using it with my future stuff. Not using my Yeti as a back scratcher yet. Gotta wait till it breaks on its own. Honestly, it's super heavy. It would make a great door stopper. Oh yeah, the plugs on the wall are great other than they show up in shot. Like, I would love them to be like a foot lower or something, but otherwise, they're awesome. Like, we really lucked out with this garage. It was already drywalled, it had plugs everywhere. Like, it was insulated. Ugh. It, we, we lucked out so much. And honestly, given how much the housing market has like, screwed up since we bought it, like, I am so grateful we got in this house when we did. We are so freaking lucky. And supposedly the house has already gone up 50k like all houses have in the past year. But that's not sustainable. I don't think it actually has. One of those inflated values you can't actually trust. Just got a mix crate and I'm about to upgrade. I mean, it could be specific to my motherboard or whatever, but like... Both of my Threadripper rigs did it, so I don't know. You know what I hope to sit on, sit on and make money on are my unopened magic boxes. Because I bought three, because I'm a real stock trader. <laughs> Alright. I'm sorry. So you're choosing to make fun of someone for their mic choice because you had a single bad experience with the microphone in the exact scenario it's not meant for. Cool. Glad to help Clark, 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 Cloak, Lobster, sorry. Oh yeah, Squid. I, I missed your message about the, the BT4, I gotta find it now. Uh, it's just gone with the IO44? Oh hell yeah! That's what I like to hear. Awesome. All right. This Ethernet cable is dead, it kept cutting out for some reason, so that is now e-waste. There must be a short somewhere. It's okay, because I just make my own now, because life is hell. Ugh. Hello? There we
See you later, Teresa. Appreciate you hanging out with us. Oh. I have 44. Oh. I see. Yes, I appreciate yet another person commenting about clutter in a stream where I'm literally cleaning up the clutter. That's lovely. I have ADHD that requires constant stimulation and juggling of projects, so if I had a clean, empty desk, I would just slit my wrists and bleed all over it. Okay, that's not an appropriate joke, but... One of those things, after 15 years of getting comments about it, I'm just kind of done. Are you changing your changing your setup? Yes. So we are completely overhauling the desk setup. We are unplugging pretty much everything on this side and converting it over to... And I am sorry, that was an inappropriate joke. Just to be clear, but regardless. Like, I'm, aw I'm aware of it. But, yes, we are unplugging everything over here. Because it is a side of my desk that, even when we were at the apartment, never got used appropriately. Like, I never got full use out of it, and I keep building up additional clutter over here on this side, where I'm trying to build basically a U-desk, because I needed more desk space for other stuff. So we're just basically kind of moving it over here, so I can actually spread out and do some artsy stuff. Can't wait to log into Twitter tomorrow. Epos joked about killing himself on stream. I usually stay out of things, but I gotta react to this one. <sighs> I'm gonna be so spiteful by the time I'm like 50. I'm gonna just like completely hermit out of the internet. It's so frustrating. If I didn't grow up on the internet with like the internet being my original escape from reality and stuff, I'd probably have hermited away from the internet entirely already. The problem is, <laughs> what I just described, the internet feels like my home, and it doesn't feel fair to have to leave my home because of other people. If that makes any sense. Oh, hey, look, I found a random stream deck. Oh, no, this isn't BMO. This is the LTT CRT plushie. It's freaking sick. I got that, I got... I feel like I got another plushie from them too, I don't remember what it was. And then they had a couple of shirts, which are amazing. You ever take the social media breaks? Not really! I don't really... Like... I think I'm burned on social media breaks because everyone has to announce it, and by nature of announcing it, and then announcing when you come back, you have defeated so many of the points of taking a social media break, and it's just attention grabby. But also, it's literally part of my job. Like, I would have to take an unpaid vacation, which is not only unpaid in terms of I stop, like, generating or doing work that generates money, but also counterproductive because if I stop for an extended period of time, then I literally work against myself in terms of future growth because of the negative impact. Like, there's no... Like, I could just stop checking Twitter and be slightly better off. And, like, I'm using it less and less over time. I haven't used Facebook seriously in years. Like, that was no problem for me. But I also don't have the self-control issues that a lot of people have with social media. Like, a lot of the people that need to take breaks from it or whatever are logging into it every day and getting stressed out about everything. And for me, it's just from my job. And if it's not related to my work, like, I don't really care to stalk people's lifestyles on Instagram or whatever. Look at me, I'm in this amazing hotel for five hours before I run away again. I'm living the best life, I'm tanned up, like, I don't care about any of that, that doesn't affect me. So I will say, uh, I've got a face cam, continues to impress me every time. This is not sponsored. Every time I go to do like a temporary streaming setup, like for my, for the NUC video or whatever, 
I go to this now because out of the box, like it still looks like a webcam. I think that's what disappoints a lot of people is they expect when someone advocates for like a great new webcam or whatever that it looks magical or you know whatever. It still looks like a webcam, but it's very, it's this one of the smoothest frame rates of any webcam I've used. And out of the box, it looks phenomenal. Now I will say, if you have the money, the this one. Hang on. Let me switch to it. Let me switch to it. Oh no, I don't have it hooked up. Hold on. Oh no. This camera, the Huddlecam HD Pro. This is on auto settings. Now, it's not lined up with me, whatever. This one, it's a little dark at the moment because NDI, for some reason, it gets darker. I will fix that at some point. But out of the box, on auto settings, it always looks incredible. It is one of the best looking webcams you can get, but it is $300 versus, I think this launched at 200. You could probably get it for cheaper now because uh, it's mainly like a B2B video conferencing. It is the Huddlecam HD Pro USB. I have, it's also the NDI one that I have on the, they have an NDI one as well. I have it on my TV. Uh, but if you want specifically a webcam, that is the best webcam you can buy. It has the best look. It's 4K. It stays sharp. It has EPTZ. It is the best webcam you can buy. It doesn't look like a webcam. The Elgato looks like a webcam. It gets crunchy. The dynamic range isn't amazing. It, when you, you know, in order to make it sharp, it's a little not great. But for the webcam look, for everything under $300, this is the best webcam you can get. And it's freaking awesome. Uh, what do you do for a living? Uh, teach people how to live stream and make videos. I guess would be the answer to that. So again, not sponsored. <sighs> not a sponsored plug. Does the Elgato beat out the classic Logitech C920? Oh, God. By a mile. Oh, it's way better. The C920 was only ever classic because you could get it for like 40 bucks. It looks horrible. It doesn't maintain a stable frame rate. It doesn't respond to it, lighting well. Its white balance is horrendous. It doesn't save settings past reboot, at least prior to their G-Hub integration. Ugh. C920 sucks these days. It's terrible. It was built for Windows 7. It never really recovered from when they removed whatever codec it had on Windows 7 that it doesn't have on Windows 10. Uh, yes, I'm using the Elgato foot pedal to switch scenes without hands. Another one of those products that when I say I'm integrating into, into my setup, I integrate it into my setup. And still doesn't keep settings. Exactly. Terrible. What's up, Excelro? The man, the myth, the legend. Also, while I'm making completely random recommendations that no one cares about, GH5S. Absolute best video camera if you want to film CRTs. Obviously, a very niche recommendation. It has synchro scan, so you can tune in the exact refresh rate of the CRT you're shooting. It has a low-pass filter, which ni neither the GH5 nor the GH5 II nor the GH6 has, which helps with more, 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 I can never say that. More, nope, more, nope. One of those things I only read and never hear say it loud, so I never know how to pronounce. Clean HDMI out, 4K60, 1080p up to like 240 in the variable mode. You can get a speed booster to basically get full frame lenses on it. Although this is APS-C lens, but I got the Sigma 1835 art with a black pro mist slapped on the front. Mmm, <clears throat> good. <sighs> Windows or Linux? Uh, how about DOS. See you later, Naldo. Hope you two have a wonderful night. What about the OBSBOT? The OBSBOT is cool. It still looks like a webcam for the most part. The 4K one looks really good. The, I'd say the 4K OBSBOT, when you tune it right, does look better in terms of overall, like, crunch look than the 
uh, than the Elgato, but it only works in MJPEG, so you still get some artifacting in it that the Elgato doesn't have. The 60 FPS mode on the Obsbot is not super great, but the Obsbot 1080p is just trash tier. And like, I'm not saying that because it's a lower resolution. Like, everything about the camera is terrible, except for the tracking on the 1080p model. You can't get color right, you can't get exposure right, it's, it's awful. We have cleared off, we have cleared out the mixer, other than like direct inputs. We have an input from my audio interface, from the Mac Mini, and then from my computer through USB. We have the two runs of my speakers. We'll rerun all of that when we run the Mac setup and get the new interface in. For now, it's fine. Maybe scoot it over a little bit. I don't know what to do with it for now. We got this big open space. We can start trying to move some of the glitch stuff, at least for now, while I figure out how to run the cables for it. Thank you, Tristan Grant. Hope you have a wonderful night. Appreciate you stopping by the stream. Appreciate anybody hanging out with me this late. I'm out of water, no! Yum, yum, yum. Send more water. Alas, poor Beacon. I knew him well. Maybe I should... Maybe I should collect glass skulls. They're so cool. Alright. Alright, so we have an XLR run for this... Oh my god. <coughs> we have an XLR run for this mic arm. Which I don't know if I need yet, but I kind of want to keep around. We have a couple video cable runs for the computer that was here that we kind of need for, I guess, the Nook. And of course, we have video for the Xbox that's over here. We have network for that computer. We have mouse and keyboard. We have a bunch of videos here. I don't know. Oh, it's the Xbox. Okay. I think most of these plugs stay. Let's see if I have a microfiber cloth here to dust this stuff. What's up, Boudra? Thanks for the info. You're underrated. Thank you. Rate me higher next time. <laughs> Appreciate you stopping by the stream. Does someone else edit your videos? So I do most of my videos, but I do have a wonderful editor by the name of Wyatt who handles a lot of my tutorials lately. We're going to be getting wild with some of them. Don't need a microphone because they already have ears everywhere, paranoia things. What? What? Are you okay? What? You use the cam link with your main cam? So I was using the cam link pro, but now everything's on NDI. So everything you're seeing is ran through the network now. But I was using the cam link pro before. And the black magic deck link quad HDMI before that, and I don't use the normal cam link anymore. I have constant issues with them uh, going black and needing to play hot potato with the USB ports and stuff. It seems to be a weird issue that only affects certain computers, but it was enough that like I just can't use them anymore. They're still great for if you want them, but the Cap 4K is a much better value at this point. Um, and the quad HDMI cards are phenomenal. March 10th on my Prime, I'll have to throw it your way. Appreciate it. Hopefully, 
Actually, that's in exactly seven days, so maybe I'll be streaming that day. You never know. I'm hopefully going to be streaming a lot this month, now that we're out of February, which was the worst. Alright, my chair is blocking me in now. We gotta move some of these VHS tapes, actually. Thoughts on the Antares Throat VST? Uh, I've never heard of it, so that would be my first thought. Antares Throat VST. Uh, hello? Well, their website's broken for one. <laughs> What is good, my guys and girls of YouTube? My name is know. Justin Omori, is good? Tell and me. I'm here to teach you guys and girls about music and whatnot. Today, is this we it? got Anter Avox Throat? That doesn't look... Antares? Okay. What is it? You can change your vocal range? Uh, big doubt, but... I mean... Um, down here, we have a high pass frequency. Alright, show me the examples. Type of... Of, of, uh, base, I can... base, 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 ex extreme everything. Output section. Interesting. This is be the output, of course. So, yeah, you can see it's trying to raise it up here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Type of things is happening when you change your vocal core. Yep, yeah, yeah. Over here, it sounds a little bit more uh, close than you know, sing, but. Yo, what? Why is the website down? Let me view your internet website. That would be wild. I kind of want to play with that. I could see why that would be great for VTubers. Straight up. Oh, Sweetwater has it. 100 bucks. Uh, I might pick this up tonight and play with it. I hope this is the updated one. Sweetwater, you're getting my money, baby. Shouts out to Jake. I mean, it looks the same. It just has different header at the top. Yo. Yeah, I might pick this up tonight and play with it this week. Never heard of it before. So I can't really say anything about it. Sweet. Should be called Antares Deep Throat. <laughs> Cannon Air, no. <laughs> oh. You can subscribe to them for a monthly fee or buy for a hundred bucks. There's no subscription that would be worth not paying a hundred bucks. Yeah, no. I'm just gonna perpetual license that shit. All right, let's continue on the desk. I need to, I don't know if I have any microfiber cloths here to dust. I don't really want to show you all my method of dusting with my sock on camera. That's kind of gross. Uh, let me see what I got here. Yeah, I 
Ooh, I know what we could try. One second. So I bought this thing a little while back because I needed to stop buying canned air. Oh, look at manipulator. Hold up. And tear is. Hang on. We're going back to this. What else they got? Manipulator? I got I see mutator. Is that what you're talking about? Punch? See, audio stuff gets into so much like intangible territory where it's like. All of them are saying the same thing in different ways. Why do you need separate plugins for all of this? Why would this not be one plugin? Sybil? Aspire? You need a dedicated plugin to add breathiness? Breathiness? Excuse me. See, some of that gets kind of funky for me. Oh. Epos is from Polyverse Music? Okay. Well, hold up. Mutator. Okay, that's just like... It's kind of similar. Extreme voice designer. Or is this is physical modeling vocal designer. <laughs> this is punch vocal impact enhancer. I, I wish they were a little cheaper just so I could play with them. Oh my god, the fist. Add serious impact to vocal tracks. Like, I could see that working for, like, rapping or something, maybe. I don't know what it... I kind of want to play with them. I kind of do. Alright. Polyverse... Manipulator. Manipulator! Basically, Squid, if there's anything cool... That you want to know my thoughts on, that probably means I want to play with it. That sounds inappropriate, but not the point. Warp and bend your voice into amazing new sounds. We've got pitch, formant, ratio, FM, octaves, alternators, harmonics. You got a sequencer. I feel like this is going to be pretty similar, but harder to like understand. Why did it keep playing? I pressed pause. That's like a talk box or something. That's actually kind of cool. Like, I was just watching a TikTok about someone who ran their voice Turned it into a synth on the keys, ran that back through a talk box, and it sounded pretty cool. Oh, some of these things, I'm like, why would you want to do this? Now that fucking slapped. If I can take a single... Is that supposed to be a single tone turns into that? I'm down. What? I feel like I'm about to go ham in Tekken. Ooh. Reminds me of our Versus album. That was so good! Whew. Tag slays with the resub tier one nine months! 
Thank you so much. Holy balls. Okay, so can I really... Like, is that really just sequencing that from a single... Uh, can y'all quit selling me on plugins? I was already looking into so many plugins. Holy balls. Okay, so this started by Squid asking about this throat modeling plugin, which I think would be sick for VTubers. And somehow we ended up on this manipulator one, which is just supposed to bend your voice. But the demos with the synths are blowing my mind. The voice one's not so much, honestly. Why is that under female vocals? That doesn't sound like vocals at all. We already heard that one. Let me be your baby, I'm gon' drive you crazy. Let me be your baby, I'm gon' drive you crazy. Uh, what I got from that. What's up, JD, please? We got a hype train coming up close because we just got a prime sub from Squid. Thank you. I've used Antares for years in my studio. They're pretty much the original auto-tune people. Oh, hell yeah! Bro, I'm still, I'm obsessed with this synth stuff. Like, this could unlock some stuff for me as a complete newbie who can mostly just make these singular tones. Like, I don't know, because some of these have, like, different words. Like, I, I feel- I can't tell if I'm being misled or not here. <laughs> I guess it's gonna be a $150 find out, but I gotta play it again. I, I have to. It's so good. Get ready for the next battle! 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 <laughs> Woo! Alright, I'm picking this up later, so I'm getting the... I'm not gonna worry about the... Well, I'm gonna save it for later, because I think it would just be amusing to meme on it, but... I'm gonna check out the throat modeling one, see if I can make myself sound like a girly girl, and... I'm gonna go ham making some freaking fighting game music with this thing. Whoo! Question is... Is this a VST, or is it a plugin for a specific program? Precise volume automation. That would be cool for sequencing too. Unique pitch freezer? Those are pretty cool. I don't know if I have enough use for them to bundle it, but... Hmm, I have ideas. I guess it would help. Ah, oh, you can take in MIDI data for it? So that means it's not a VST. Right? Oh, okay, here we go. Helps if I read. VST, VST. 3 AUAAX. So that should work with at least like basic shit like audition, but should also work with Studio One. I'm thinking. I'm hoping. Okay. Look! I almost sound like their template with a key progression that's based off your input. Honestly, again, as someone who's just learning synth stuff, like it would unlock a lot for me. Obviously that, one, obviously that one's going for like the Stranger Things kind of look, but that's fine. You can try it for free at interiorstech.com, except for the part where the website wasn't loading. <laughs> the entire website just completely crashed. Is it back now? Okay. Yeah, we, we literally just went to it a minute ago and it was completely crashed. Sick. Okay, then I'll definitely try it for free. But I can't make my video on it for free, or the developers are going to send nasty tweets and reddit threads about it. If Linus is any model to go by. Auto-tune unlimited. I see the subscription models for everything. Well, that's cool. Better than my $600 a year freaking Red Giant subscription. Ugh. Alright, anyway. We're gonna get a glitch art music video with custom music and visuals. Yes! 
I mean, like, the only synth thing I have posted publicly was not a great example of anything. But it felt like it met the, uh, the theme I was going for, so I used it. But, the uh, the, where is it? Here. The press reset thing. Like, that was an accident. And I was just like, hey, that sounds like a message lost in space. I'm gonna save it. Like, it sounds like what those typical, like, uh... Like, cartoon space ventures sounded like. And I was like, that freaking works. Let's go with it. So, I'm already getting to that point, and that's what all the pedals and stuff are for. So, we're getting there. So, what are we trying to do? I'm trying to clean my desk, but I got sent down a rabbit hole of cool audio plugins. So... Days of Fruity Loops. Well, this was done with analog. I got a Neutron. I know it's like baby's first synth. Whatever. I got a Neutron. And then I picked up one of these uh, loud objects noisemakers that just generates like a one bit tone or whatever for me to work with. So it generates like video gamey kind of sounds. They're, they're super aggressive. Like I don't like most of them. Uh, but it's pretty cool. Okay, uh, anyway, the point, before we run out of time here, because it's getting pretty late, I picked up this, uh, X3 Hurricane canless air system, because I needed to stop buying aluminum cans full of air. So I'm going to see if I can dust my desk mat with this here, since I don't have anything more usable available, without going into the house, at which point I should just stay in there. It's got battery. I've heard mixed reviews about the X2, but the X3 was supposed to be an improvement on it or something. I don't know. I just needed this. Because my only other thing, I have like the DataVac or whatever that has a hard cord attached to it. And that thing is so loud and powerful that it's not usable in a lot of situations because it's just too much. Like, it blows my ears out. Alright, so I'm going to mute my mic for this, but... It's fucking awesome. But yeah, I have the data back. It is like if I take a PC out, that's like if I get an old PC from someone that's caked in dust and I need to get that out there and I'll take it outside, I can hit it with the data back, but I don't want to use that with most stuff. Now I got dust flying around everywhere though. That was insane. I'm going to turn on my air purifier real quick so I can suck some of it up. I need a bigger one, though. Need to make it sound like Xbox Live in here. You want me to make it sound like I just insulted someone's mother? Is that what you want out of me? Alright. So, curse you to Squid, who gave me their Prime sub, to be fair, but have cost me now, is gonna cost me tonight, uh, basically 200 bucks for these damn plugins, because I can't, I can't not do it. I gotta. I gotta. Well, maybe, maybe I don't pay money for the, maybe I just do the trial for the throat one. And see if it's something worth playing with long term and making a video on. I don't think there's a trial for the manipulator, though. I want to thank you for your studio build series. Heck yes! By the way. 
completely unprompted shout out other than that message. If you are interested in more studio tours, this guy, Andrew Masters, does weekly, or at least it was at one point weekly, studio tours of actual like music and audio production studios. A lot of them now he's touring are like home studios, but he tours like he just toured warm audios studios that they just built. They're incredible. These videos are super inspiring, lots of tips to pick up on, and just a damn good binge watch. I've watched so many of them at this point. Like, I haven't watched some of his personal build stuff because I want to watch them back to back, but like, I just keep going through the YouTube recommendations rabbit hole and covering so many of these. And like, there's so many little things I pick up here and there that are so useful. On top of the fact that it's sending me down the rabbit hole of wanting to get, like, I'm getting, I'm hopefully getting a PreSonus Quantum. And then, like, I'm like, okay, I want to learn how to mic up a drum kit, even though I don't play drums. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm converting, which I bought this, like, three years ago for that very purpose. But I'm converting this transparent phone into a telephone mic. It's going to have two mics. And I'm like, how would this sound mic in a guitar amp? And it's like, it's been a whole rabbit hole. Maybe contact them and ask if you can do a video. Um, honestly, maybe, but they're big enough. Like, it, it's always awkward with these bigger companies because either they're big enough, like a lot of companies I've worked with with recently, um, they're big enough that they're just not gonna give a crap and they're just gonna be like, yeah, here's a key because we don't, we don't, we don't care. We don't need your individual money. But they could also be big enough that they're like, who the hell are you, and never respond. <laughs> Or, in the case of recent things, you could be big enough that they're going to meme on you on stream. Probably not the case from legacy audio companies, but, you know, it's always a toss-up. Either they're never going to respond at all, or they're just going to hand me whatever the hell they want. With these super big, like, established companies that realistically don't need me in any capacity. Like, I can't realistically tell this company that I'm going to give them any value in exchange for the key. Everyone knows who they are. Alright. We've made good progress clearing the desk. I really need to go to bed soon. I at least want to pull the CRT over here so I can, like, commit to this change. I think that will fight my ADHD enough. Like, if I disrupt the broken workflow I already have and move the CRT over here, that'll make it so when I sit down the next time and look at it again, I know, like, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm the bacon audio streaming champion with some with some scrambled eggs on the side. All good, Naz. Uh, the carpet tiles. So, for those who missed it, the floor in the studio here... The floor in the studio here is carpet tiles. They are one inch, I think, is the thickness. They're not very thick at all. Um, we chose to just put them direct on the concrete. So, honestly, they're not super great under the feet, because you are basically walking on concrete. Um, that's my only real complaint. And I would have loved to do, like, a subfloor thing for, like, audio treatment and stuff anyway. Um, how they've held up under the chair is honestly fine. Like, you can notably see that they're pretty flattened down, and I think maybe under a year or two more, I'm going to want to replace a couple of these tiles. But you get, like, a box extra when you buy them, so it's not... Like, it's completely sustainable for the most part, and I could even move those to a part under the workbench or something that you never see. Um, but they haven't actually gotten damaged or anything at all. They're just clearly getting flattened more and more as time goes. So I could even just, like, rotate them out and probably be fine, but, like, it's fine, honestly.
I've given maybe $60 across Twitch and Discord subs, and I've yet I've cost you $500. <laughs> Damn you! To be fair, I haven't actually pulled the trigger on any of the things we've talked about yet, but they're all pretty much surefire. And the whole thing with emailing, uh... With emailing Polyverse... Is... Like, I could do it... And I could probably, like... The best outcome, I could get the key for free. The problem is, the downside to that outcome... Is the delay of waiting to hear back. I won't have this energy carried into it where I'm like really excited to play with it and see how it would work with my synth stuff. That by the time I do get the key, I may never get back to it. Or may not get back to it as excitedly or whatever. Like that's just ADHD things. But like in, in, in a lot of cases, just buying it now to play with it now while I'm in the headspace and see if it actually works for me versus getting the key in say a month or two and then putting it off for six months. Yeah. I forgot how this TV's plugged in. I don't want to just like. Can't you ask about the key and do a trial in the meantime? For the throat one, yes. For the manipulator one that had all the synth stuff, it I don't see a trial mention anywhere. Okay, this CRT does not have a removable cable, so I have to climb down here and unplug it. I told you this stream would be revealing or exposing myself. I went with carpet and underlay and three months. I think the underlay is having issues. I could see that. Yeah, I could see like softer material having issue with it. Maybe I got lucky going with carpet tiles because the carpet tiles under the desk section, actually most of them are fairly thin and like rough. Um, not rough, but just like flat and thin and not there's nothing to really get torn up so like it's not great on the feet but like I can just wear sh shoes with insoles when I really need to I can hear the sirens what are you talking about breaking twitch rules is just how you get a paid vacation Y'all will come gift 500 subs, 2,000 subs after I come back from my band to stick it to the man, right? Give Bezos that money to show you that, show him that you hate Bezos or something. Jeffrey Bezos. I don't know that I really like how or where that is. For now it's fine, I don't really know how to position it better. Honestly, 
having the... Oh, I lost internet. Hello, world. Hello? <laughs> so that's another reason I need to, uh, switch motherboards. My nick keeps going out. I didn't unplug anything. This just happens sometimes. And as best as I can tell, it's just the nick on my motherboard. Like, my motherboard is slowly dying, slot by slot, port by port. It is the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. So, Asus is supposed to be sending me the WRX80 Sage, and things should be peachy from there, but anyway, as I was saying, I'm actually really going to like having all the video synth gear here, because it's going to create a much better vibe. Like, I I'm already picturing it. Like, this is why I wanted to get to this point at least tonight, because I can picture... Hold up, let me get it right. Like, I can literally sit here and just sit here, you know, get a webcam going and stuff and vibing, just watching the TV, getting the exact glitches I want dialed in, and not what I do over here, which is, you can't see this, um, like, sit here and be like, all right, which one of these can I plug in? Oh, no, they're all falling. Oh, God. Sit it in my lap, half looking at everything. Like, it's going to be so much better. Case in point. Am I disconnected again? No. OBS still says disconnected, reconnecting in one second. Okay. I was having an argument with a friend recently. Well, that's not a good idea. He said, the ideal recording space would be a completely open field with no wind, because you'd never have reflections. Yeah, I mean, kind of, if it's a purely open field for miles or something. Because there's no reflections. I don't know about cardioid mics needing something in the back of them. I don't know that that's necessarily true. I mean, theoretically, if audio has nothing to bounce off of, and like the, if the ground is like really nice grass or moss or something to absorb it, so the only reflective surface is the ground, and it's not reflecting. I mean, yeah. You would probably have a really thin voice. I think that's where your argument's coming from about the back of the capsule stuff, is without any sort of reflections or like presence to where your voice is, you're going to be really thin. Like, think about trying to, like, talk to someone in that field. You got to start raising your voice. Bass does not travel well through air. I have no way of testing this. Especially without remove, you know, with the caveat that, of course, you have to remove wind and air travel and whatever. Cars. I feel like you're both right. I think in terms... Wide open field is the same as a perfect acoustic chamber. The pressure levels would be different, right?
Okay, but the polar pattern doesn't really matter in an open field. If you're in an open field with no reflections or other sound sources, you could record with an Omni and be fine. Like, it would sound the same, mostly. Other than the acoustics within the mic housing itself. That's tough. Is actually an empty list feature this void of static air. Yeah, you know those those things like John Oliver recording in the white void? That's what it would be. So basically VTubing, but with audio. Okay, but see that's I think that might be the difference between an acoustic chamber and an open field. In an acoustic chamber, you hear the quietness. In an open field, you're not going to be you're not going to tend to talk quieter. You're going to talk louder. Cuz your voice is carrying further. There's there's the difference. Okay. An acoustic chamber is absorbing all of those sounds. Your voice only carries so far. And outside, your voice continues carrying and you tend to project more to try to get it to carry stronger. Whereas a, an, an acoustic chamber is going to be closed in, you're going to hear the silence, for lack of a better explanation, and you're going to talk quieter. You don't talk quieter, even in a completely this made-up open field. You would talk louder. And combine that with the fact that there's no possible scenario. It's like light pollution. There's, You're, you're never going to be free of sound pollution. And you might in snow, because snow helps with sound pollution, but then your own voice is reflecting a lot more. Okay, this is a head-scratcher. I feel like this is a conversation for Hank Green, if Hank Green was, like, fully studied up on acoustics. Because he answers all this kind of weird stuff all the time. Like, l ice is lava. I feel like I'm not wrong about that, even if the technical answer is correct on that, because I could see an argument that technically the way your voice plays and stuff and is absorbed and not absorbed or whatever in the field and in the acoustic chamber, I could see that being correct. Like, that makes total sense to me. But when we talk about the same tendencies, wide open field late at night is the same. You talk very quietly because your voice travels further. But you also do that because you hear the reflections. I don't know. I see what you're saying, though. I don't, I don't entirely disagree. I don't feel like polar pattern matters at all in that scenario. Like an Omni should perform identically. Like if you're in an identical, if you're in that idyllic situation, I feel like an omnidirectional mic would be the mic you wanted to go with. If you're not trying to reject any sound, why would you not go with the microphone with the most pickup? Oh, this hurts my head. It is too late to be talking about this stuff. Have you checked out the Behringer XM8500? I have not. All right, let's set a few more things over here and figure out where the layout's going to be, and then we got to wrap up the stream. It is almost 4 a.m. 4 a.m., waking up in the morning, got to be fresh, got to go downstairs. Which stream will I cancel? I uh, pretty much always stay up this late. The majority of my streams these days are 10 p.m. Eastern or later. All right. So we've got... Thank you, Triad Orbit Ballheads. 
I need to get the triad orbit mic stand and stuff. How late you stay up doesn't matter, it's how early you get back up in the morning. Yeah, and our kid's been waking up earlier and earlier, but given the fact that he woke up at like 11, 10, 10 30 p.m. after having only gone to bed at like 9, and then was up until 1 30 at least, maybe 2. Hopefully, he sleeps in tomorrow. All right, so we got the Xbox stack back here. These cords just need to run to the computer, but I want to be able to... I want room for control surfaces, but I also need room to write and stuff. Ah! I need, like, a modular desk environment where, like, the entire desk just, like, shifts as I need it. Or I just need a lot more workspace. Except I'm gonna always sit... The problem is, I build other workspaces, but then I sit here because this is where my main computer, my Discord server, the main work stuff I gotta work on sits. And then I only touch what's around me, which is how I keep getting into this freaking mess. Can't wait to see your retro setups 30 years from now when you're setting up your new old stock LG Ultra Wide Monitor. Oh man. Could you imagine? Huh. I kind of hope CRTs still work by then, but you never know. Sorry. Just saw some crazy Halo toxicity on Twitter. I'm so done with people being so angry about video games. Play something else in the meantime. Have a healthy library of video games that you can switch between. Get one of those under table keyboard trays for pen and paper stuff. I couldn't, I can't write on that though. The ergonomics of that is terrible. Especially because I have my desk at a specific height that is the like right ergonomic height for typing. Like, my knees would hit the tray in the first place and then writing that low would just be awful. Alright, anyway. I really wish I could get my speakers off the desk and put them back on the wall like I had them at the old place because they are very hard to work with at the desk. But I don't have any reasonable way to keep them on the wall and keep them in phase. I don't think. Because the awkward angle of my monitor and it being ultra wide and stuff and being modular for when I inevitably switch monitors again. Yeah. Alright, anyway. I think in an ideal world, I'm ditching the mixer for this setup. Like I said, I could move it over here. Because the mixer is the big thing getting in the way of my space right now. Because I need this stuff to be mostly here and close to the edge of the desk. Because I'm thinking like... I could set up a little patch panel almost to run to the mixer or something for my composite video inputs. And then I could set all the controllers here. Most of these are plugged in. I get the idea, just like, have some of this here, have some of my synth stuff up under the monitors, but then I have to run the synth stuff to the mixer. Although, if I'm running MIDI, I could probably reach the interface. Or maybe MIDI stuff goes up here when I get the new interface. I don't know. This is gonna be a problem, because running all the cables over top of this would be a problem, because all these need composite video ins and outs. This is what I want. Like, the more I sit with it, the more it's clear this is how I want it to function. Hey, 
And I'm always getting and swapping out these modules, so I don't want it to be too rigid on what's here. I definitely think if I can move the mixer or relocate it to, you can't see this. So this part of the desk where the CRT was, if I could put the mixer over there, like nothing's eating that spot right now, then I could fit all this stuff here. And then I can really be in my creative zone. Just fully vibing. Don't even have to look at the work monitor if I don't want to. I would need an extra long DP cable to route this monitor up. Maybe I mount it above. Or maybe I just run it to one of these 1440p monitors. That would probably be the reasonable solution. I just paid a lot of money for this Dell, so I'm trying to make sure it gets used. It's like a $1,400 monitor. Yeah, I think this is the call. Mixer left, video mixers here. It's not going to stop me from piling stuff up in a rush, in a project. I can't really stop that, but it would give me the perfect vibe station here. So I can start making some fucking art. Yeah, I think this is the goal. And either the mixer can st or the matrix can stay on here, or maybe I slide it. I should have enough slack to slide it on top of the VCRs here, out of the way, so I can move this table somewhere else. And like I said, I should be able to control it over Ethernet. I just haven't had time to look into it, so. All right. I think that's what we're ending it on today. I know it wasn't a ton of action. We had a lot of talky topics today, which is fine. I think this is good progress, though. I appreciate you all hanging out with me. I don't think I would have gotten the exact right angles and everything. Um, had I... Oh, what? I don't, had I not done this stream, I don't think I would have figured out exactly what I wanted in the same capacity. Alright. I appreciate you all very much. Thank you for hanging out with me. Hope to see you over on Discord. Discord.gg slash Uh, yeah. Twitch subs get secret chats and big stuff. I showed you all the NDI layout. We got huge stuff coming with that. I just finally wanted to be able to tease it and show it off like in a way where you can actually see it because I've been hyping it up for months. We're very close. We are very fucking close. All right. Thank you all. See you later.